our way maker, our promise keeper, and he'll never leave us nor forsake us.
Bibles, you can turn to uh, Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 8. And as you find your place, you know, I, I just, as I had prepared last uh, week's message, and, you know, uh, we went through the end of Romans, chapter 7, and, you know, the thought was the struggle is real. I thought I couldn't do it justice if I didn't go into Romans chapter 8. Right? I just felt like I had to go into Romans chapter 8. Just It's one of those things where I couldn't. You just, you know, I, we, uh, and I can say it's true in my own life. How often I neglect speaking to the Holy Spirit like he's the third person of the Trinity. When I understand that he has been given to strengthen me, to guide me, to direct me, to teach me. And yet I put him up on the shelf like he just sits there and... Uh, doesn't have an active part, but I understand that he, I believe, is more active in the church today than what he's ever been in the history of the church. For when Christ left, remember in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, and I, he's leaving, right? And he said, but I'm sending you somebody. Yeah. Right? He, 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 he said, somebody is coming, and that is the Holy Spirit. And he said, I'm going to give you the Spirit, and after you've received the Spirit... You're going to have power. Amen. Amen. And I find oftentimes that I neglect his presence. That I know assuredly all the times I've come into church, his presence has always been there. Amen. The greatest thing about the Holy Spirit is it's not just in church that you find his presence. You actually will find it everywhere. Yes. The thing is, I'm just not sensitive to it. And we come here to Romans chapter 8, which they would say, if Romans was a ring, Romans chapter 8 would be the diamond that sits on top of the ring. And he says this in verse 1, he says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation. We ended last week with knowing the struggle is real and sin has us bound and we're just, we're just, uh, uh, woe is us. We can't do anything. We are just bound up to the law of sin. It takes us and it has us just wrapped up. And Paul said this in 25, but right thanks be to God through Jesus Christ and because of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden now we have this spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. And he says, therefore, there is now no condemnation. Whatever you did is gone. Yes. Right? Wherever you were is gone. Whoever you were is gone. What you did in the past is gone. Amen. For those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. If I had a thought today would be spirit led living. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, I, I just pray this morning that you would just begin to speak to every heart that is in here. As we find you in the beginning of time hovering over the depths of the seas, I pray this morning that you are hovering over the depths of our hearts. That you are hovering over the depths of our inward person, Lord, that you see everything and nothing is hid from you. And I just pray this morning that we would become more sensitive to your leading, to your guiding. And when you speak, we would listen. That I understand, God, it is through your spirit that I have victory over sin. And I pray for everyone that hears this message, Lord. I pray just for a strengthening and encouragement and uplifting, Lord. And I just give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And the church said, Amen. Amen. 
So we come to the first thing Paul starts in, in verse 1 is there, there is therefore now no condemnation. The simple declaration of no condemnation comes to all those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus this morning, you have no condemnation. Amen? Amen. You have no condemnation. There is nothing that you've done in your past. If you, once you've accepted Christ, therefore there is now no condemnation. So whatever you may be struggling with this morning... Uh, if, if it is in life or what you did uh, before Christ, is, there is no condemnation. Even after you've accepted Christ, if you have fallen short and you've accept, you, right, you've asked for forgiveness, there's no condemnation. Uh, past, present, future, there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. There is none. There is nothing. There is not less condemnation. There isn't the thought process of thinking that we should just have less. I, I still feel guilty, but I, I just have less. There is no condemnation. There is nothing. His, Christ's sacrifice, his resurrection, took away all condemnation. Right. Everything. You have been set free. This morning I'm here to tell you, you have been, there is a law of liberty in this house yeah. this morning. Amen. Amen. If you are still thinking about the things in your past, then you haven't been. Set free for your future. Or you're not operating. If you've accepted Christ. You're not operating. In the no condemnation. For those that are in Christ Jesus. You look at that sin and you say. I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus. Has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do. Weak as it was. Through the flesh. God did. I don't know about you this morning, but that's uh, one of the greatest things is what I find in my life over and over in is God did. Amen. Right? God did. He did. He didn't. He isn't doing. He isn't. He did. Once he did it, it was for all of time. Christ does not have to die over and over again. When he died and rose again, it was for all of time. Amen. Amen. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. I'm here to tell you this morning that we have to understand that there is two contrasts. There's the contrast of sin, right, of the flesh, and there's the contrast of the spirit. The problem with our lives is we live because uh, we talked last week. We had spent time on this. That they, we have the sin nature, right? It is always there. It will always be present. It, it, the flesh never dies until I take my last breath, right? Or unless Christ comes again and I am taken into glory, that I will always have this flesh. The sin nature will always be a part of my life. It will always be present. The nature of it. It will always be there. There will always be those opportune times, right, where all of a sudden, no matter how much I've been praying or not, how much I've been doing things, there will be opportunities to walk according to the flesh. And what I do there and how I operate is whether I'm going to yield my members, my body, to walk after the flesh or after the spirit, I choose. I said last week, I, I sometimes, and I hate to say it like this, that I feel bad for the devil because we're always blaming him for everything that's going on. Right? Yeah. Sure, I mean, if you want to blame him for the origination of sin, but Adam sinned, and because Adam sinned, sin has entered into the world, and we all do it, right? I, it is my choice when I sin, though. Satan can't make me sin. He can't force me to sin. Now, because of sin nature, if you're not a Christian, yes, he runs you and sin runs your course, and you have no choice. It is, it is nothing you have no control over. But once you come to Christ, Right? Once you come to Christ, you have been liberated. You have been set free. All of a sudden, the law, right? I, it's like, I don't like flying in planes. I've said this before. But I'm here to tell you, flying in a plane defies the law. We understand that? You know what law it defies? The law of gravity. That's what flying in a plane does. You get in. There is a law that says, I should keep planted on the earth. Amen? The last flight we went on, I, I told my wife, I said, I'm not flying for two years. We did not have a good experience coming back. And I thank God that it was only like an hour flight. I mean, my heart rate was like in the 150s. I'm like, Lord, I'm coming home. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, and you know what I think is bad, and I start telling it to somebody else. I said, man, unless the unless the uh, cabin doors are, you know, your luggage doors are flopping open and the air mats are falling out, he's like, you had a good flight. I'm thinking, man, no, uh, I don't know about that. I know if that happened, I would probably be done flying for the rest of my life. Amen. Until until Christ comes again and I go to meet Him in the air. That's 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 about the only flying I want to do. Amen. Yeah. But flying defies a law. It all of a sudden you go up and you don't come down. This is what the law of the spirit is. The law, there is a law of sin, right? That says you're going to go down, you're going down, you're going fast. But all of a sudden when Christ came and he died and God sent the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden he lifts us up and now we fly above the law. Amen. Amen. All of a sudden a law that had been written is now defeated. Amen. He said, so the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Amen? Amen. That it has been fulfilled, not through us, not by me, not the things I do. It's not because I read my Bible this morning and I and I prayed this morning and I sang worship songs and I played the guitar. And now I've, I've got this, this law of liberty in me because I did all these things. It is solely because Christ is in me why I have that liberty. It is solely 100% on him. If I revert back to me, I will fail. If I revert to self, I will keep failing over and over and over again. Our walk, the pattern of our life, must be according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. Amen. Walking in the spirit means that the course the direction, the progress of one's life is directed by the Holy Spirit. How often do I get up in life and do I say, Holy Spirit, what are we doing today? Holy Spirit, what is your plan for today? And I know that seems trivial. And I know that sometimes that seems... <laughs> Like, oh man, you're just pushing this to a whole nother uh, fanatical level, brother Andy. You're just, you're just, you're, he is present. He is here. And he is active. Amen. It is no more trivial than when I hop in the car to go to dinner with my wife. I just don't drive anywhere. Amen. Amen. If we're going to dinner, what I usually say is, babe, where do you want to go? And then she looks back at me and she says, I don't care, babe, where do you want to go? And then I pick a place and she says, I don't want to go there. <laughs> right? How often do we ask the Spirit when you know, I, I, I'm here to tell you that you know when you are in Christ... The Spirit has sealed you. There is instances in my life and there is times where I know and I feel my frustration level going up in certain circumstances or situations. I feel my blood pressure start to rise. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit sits there and says, are you going to walk that way? Are you, are you going to make that choice? Are you going to do that? And I have that internal struggle, right? And that internal struggle where all of a sudden I say, but I need to just, I need to tell him how I feel. And the Spirit of God says, do you, do you need to tell him that way? Right? The Spirit of God says, don't do it like that. Do it like this. Don't do it. He's in there and he's in us. And I, and I know most of us, if we are in Christ Jesus, you can all sit there and say there has been a, a point or moment or there is a daily, when he is speaking to you, you hear it when he's telling you not to do something. I told him last week, I remember when I first had gotten saved and I remember... Uh, having all my friends and, and being in, 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 you know, coming out of it and, and accepting Christ. And I remember, I remember getting invited by a bunch of my buddies to go back to a party. And I remember being there and I remember the conviction of being at the party, right? And then I remember them coming up to me and pressuring me and I said, you know, no, no, I'm not drinking tonight. And I remember, I remember them giving me a beer and finally talking me into a beer and I'm like, I'm not going to drink it, you know, just because I had too much conviction to enjoy it, but I'm sitting here on two paths. There, I mean, a literal struggle was going on. 
But I'm sitting there then, and then you just keep coming up. And they're like, man, you haven't even drank yet. What's your problem? And then the same sense is every time I would, you know, I would, I would, I would think I was going to drink it, the Spirit of God would be saying, don't do that. And what I realized was, I had enough of Jesus I couldn't enjoy sin, but I also had enough sin I couldn't enjoy Jesus. I couldn't keep mixed in both of them together. I couldn't survive. It was either a choice. I had to do one thing or the other. And he says this, the futility of trying to please God in the flesh goes into verse 5, right? For those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. That it is a mindset. When I understand it is a battle of my mind on where I'm setting my focus. If I always set my focus on the things of the world, on the things of the flesh, then I will be more apt, I will be prone to live a life according to the flesh. But if I set my mind according to the Spirit and the things of the Spirit, then I will operate accordingly. I will start to find it. It isn't in my strength. It isn't in me. See, what happens is oftentimes we, we think is in of ourselves. But he says this in 6, For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Romans 6, 23, right? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ the Lord. That this is what it is. The flesh will always lead you to destruction. That's right. That's right. No matter what they say, the end result of walking in the flesh will always be destruction. It will always leave hurt, will leave heartache, will leave devastation, will leave separation when I walk according to the flesh. But the mind that is set on the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I'm here to tell you this morning, when I walk according to the flesh, it is impossible for me to please God. I begin to miss the things that God has for me when I walk according to the flesh. Right? The flesh battles against God because it does not want to be crucified and surrendered to the Lord. I find it so amazing how it always works out. I, I, I don't know about you in, in my life. Whenever I've decided, I'm like, you know what, Lord? I need to fast. I need to, I need to get my flesh under subjection. I need to, I just, right, that, when we talk about fasting, why I think fasting is so important is denying yourself. It is denying yourself something that you need to survive. It is natural that when you start fasting, your body starts to, uh, uh, right, if you, some people I know when you miss a meal, uh, they're not very pleasant people, Amen. <laughs> You, you can turn to him and you can look at him and you can say, man, have you ate it? it my favorite, honestly, d d d portrays this the best is uh, Snickers, right? It's always a person who's angry and yelling and it says, you're not, who you're, you're, right? you're hungry, you're not who you are until you eat a Snickers. Like, that is what in the flesh, we, we, we sit there and whenever I decide to make a fast, right, I'm going to make a fast, this is what I'm going to do. And then I show up at work and guess what, somebody brings like a box of Essen House Donuts. And the flesh says, God wants you to start tomorrow. <laughs> the Spirit says, start today. It is impossible to please God when I walk after the flesh, when I'm going to live according to the rules of this world. I'm here to tell you this morning, we are not subject. I am not subject to the law of the flesh. I, I, I don't have to live according to it anymore. Right. I don't have to keep walking in those ways. I, what I'm saying is, I'm not 
us understand that when, when you accept Christ and you start walking in the Spirit, that you are never, ever going to make a mistake. And everything you do is perfect. It's not what I'm saying this morning. What I'm saying is, when you walk after the Spirit, that when you make the mistake, you get right up from it. When you fall, you have, the, you have the ability, when you fall, to get up and say, if you've hurt somebody, you go back to them. And you say, that's not how a Christian should have acted. Spirit-led living is going to take me to deny myself. It is going to take self-denial. I'm going to have to put what Andy wants aside when it comes to spirit-led living. The problem we have is we live in a world that is all about self. Right? I mean, I mean it's, 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 you know, I, I think about this, you know, from growing up and, and living life. You, you know, you went out and you bought a home phone. And you know, when I say a home phone, a home phone, you know, many of us may not know what those, you know, some, I know some kids in here like, home phone, what's that? <laughs> you know, you, you bought a, you bought an old home phone and, and that phone was your phone. Like, I don't ever remember growing up that, that year after year, my mom came home with a new phone. She's like, look at the new home phone we got. <laughs> this thing's so cool. Right? <laughs> And, and, and I found that what we have in this day and age, right, just in the little things, in, 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 in the phone that I carry that, that went from, right, we put them into cars, and now we put them in our hands, and now, right, it was a flip phone, and it was great, and it made things better, but now it's, it's on us everywhere we go. Everywhere. And now it's not only good that we have it everywhere, but we, but we always are updating to the better one, and the better one, and the better one. And then we tell ourselves, oh man, this old one just, it, it's, it's acting funny. I need a new one. Right? Or, or they get you where Apple now says, right? They do, they, I don't know all the plans. Verizon does it. Where now they have a change in every year. You get the latest. It's about self. Right? It's about self. We've done it in the restaurants we go to, right? You, you, have, you have Burger King, right? Your way right away. Right? All these, all these things we've made and what they push is self. We live in a world that goes 100% against God. Everything is about more and more. Make yourself feel better. Make, do it about... And if I don't walk after the Spirit, I will fulfill the lusts of the flesh. We have to realize this morning, the battle is in us. The struggle is real. And if I don't yield to the Spirit, I will just keep going over and over in the same errors, over and over. But I don't have to live like that. Right? The greatest thing about uh, Romans chapter 8 was it starts off, the first thing is there's no condemnation. And as we progress through here, I'm telling you this morning, there will be no defeat. He says this. However, in verse 9, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. He said, this is a truth this morning. If you are, right, if you are not, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, if you have accepted Christ this morning as your Lord and Savior, you have the ability to walk after the spirit. And I will be 100% transparent. If you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, there is no way you will ever make it. You will always live according to the flesh. You will always operate in the flesh. You will try to do good and you will always fail. That's right. I remember, I go back to being saved in, in the early part of my walk. And I remember my music collection. 
you know, I had, I had, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers and Beastie Boys and all, all this stuff that, that, that I would say is, is, is not, uh, uh, does not edify, does not build, does not lift, does not encourage. Uh, if you want to have a discussion with me, have it with me anytime. We'll discuss it later. Amen. But it doesn't lift. It doesn't edify. If you, if, if 90% of the music you listen to is country music, you're listening to the wrong music. We're going 100%. If, if, if the majority of the music I'm putting in isn't, isn't godly music that is pushing you to worship and to lift his name, there's, I'm going to be 100% lot. That's wrong. Just as if life is, the majority of my life is spent outside of, of, of Christ, of preaching and reading and studying and around godly people. There is something wrong. I, I'm not saying we shouldn't go out to the world. We should win people. But I understand that I should walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. Amen. And I remember being, and I said, I came to myself, I said, I, it's just isn't working for me. Listening to this music isn't working for me. And I remember this right, wrong, and different. This, I don't think this is 100% right. But I remember going down the road, and one by one, I began to throw the CDs out my car window. Because I knew it wasn't getting me closer. But what I've often find many times before that is when I would get ready to make a change, all of a sudden my flesh would say, oh, you don't need to do that. Uh -huh. All of a sudden when I would get ready to make the change, he would say, you're not that bad. All of a sudden when I knew I was wrong, he would say, it's okay to be upset. That person deserved it. Right? You, you, you knew what they did to you. You, you, you Man, I mean, you didn't, you know, just, just act this way. When the whole time the Spirit's saying, you need to change. And the tenant says, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. And I love, I love 11, but if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you, will give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Amen. This morning, I want you to know you have a living spirit inside of you. Amen. You have a person who is living inside of you who will give you the, the, the ability, the same spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you. Amen. We have the ability, the ability to overcome any circumstance or situation in our lives, not because of myself, not because of my strength, but because of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of me. Amen. If only I yield to him. If only I surrender. And here is the truth this morning. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you are living according to the flesh you must die but if the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body you will live it is in your hands this morning whether you are going to let the deeds of this body die or live your husband or your wife can't do it for you your brother or your sister can't do it for you. Your parents can't do it for you. Your kids can't do it for you. Your best friend can't do it for you. Nobody can do it for you but you yourself if you choose to surrender to him. We have to put to death this body. Every morning when I wake up, I have to put myself into check because I'm here to tell you that there are times where fleshly Andy rises up. Where in and of myself, there's times where I think all of a sudden I am somebody. All of a sudden I think, and that's just the way it's going to be. Because I'm in charge. That's just the way it is. Because I'm going to live life how I want to live life. 
That is the flesh. That is the old man trying to raise up against the new man. That is the war that is happening. But I must choose to say, Lord, I need your help. I need your strength. If I'm going to be the man you've called me to be, I have to be willing to lay myself down. Amen. The Holy Spirit leads us by guidance. We are led by his drawing. We are led by his authority. But I'm here to tell you, never once does it say the Spirit of God drives you. The Holy Spirit will never drive you anywhere. He will always lead you. Amen. Where does he lead us? He leads us to repentance. Amen? Amen? He leads us to think less of ourselves and more of Jesus. He leads us into truth. He leads us into love. He leads us into holiness. And he leads us into usefulness. Amen. The evidence we are God's children is 16. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may be also glorified with him. I'm here to tell you this morning. Spirit-led living is possible when we deny self yes. and surrender to the Spirit yes. of God. Amen. When we stop treating him like he is a, 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 a completely different person that isn't a part. The Holy Spirit is much God. Is right. There is. You can pray to the Holy Spirit. You can. And there, there is in heaven where all of a sudden Jesus, all of a sudden because you're worshiping the Spirit and you're saying, Holy Spirit, I just thank you for your direction, your leading. That all of a sudden Jesus says, Stop. You're, you're giving him too much worship. Right. When I worship the Holy Spirit. It is the same as if I'm worshiping Jesus or God. They are three in one. There is no, there is no jealousy in them when it comes to that. Amen. I want to end with this this morning. Imagine that you've decided to go sailing. The biggest problem with it is, though, you don't, you don't know anything about sailing. So you do what a lot of people would do. You probably get on Google or uh, 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 YouTube and you start to do it. And you start to look up all these things about sailing. And you find all these great things. And maybe some people recommend some books to you. So you carefully read them. You watch some videos. And then actually you go to the local, uh, uh, down one of the lakes. And you find a, uh, maybe a little a sailboat place. And you start talking to a, a, a veteran sailor. And so the next day, because you've gotten all this information, all this experience, you know what you do? You rent a sailboat. You examine it closely to make sure everything's like what you read, and you go over all the techniques, right? You, you, uh, you know, you, you, you get all the working stuff, and you feel really good about it. You're like, man, this is just like what I read. Everything is normal. This is, I'm going to sail today. So you follow all the instructions, you remember the expert advice you were given, and then you successfully hoist the sail. And at that, and at that precise moment, you learn probably the most crucial lesson of all when it comes to sailing when you hoist that sail. Is if there's no wind, you go nowhere. If there is no wind, you go absolutely nowhere. The worst truth about this is, is I can say I've tried to do this in my own life. I haven't physically went and watched videos and rented a sailboat. But God has given me something. And he's given me tools. And I've read those tools. And I've studied those tools. And then I thought that I was just going to hoist the sail of life and just coast. And the reality of it is, I go nowhere unless the Spirit of God yes. blows me. Amen. I go nowhere unless the Spirit of God leads me to where I need to go. Amen. 
Until I find that place, guess what? What I find myself is just sitting on a boat on the water. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I count it a privilege to be in your house. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just, we would just get so in tune with your presence. Your leading and your guiding and your direction. That we would hear you speak in the midst of any circumstance, in the midst of any circumstance or situation in life. We would hear you leading us. And we would say yes. Yes, I'll surrender. I pray for strength, Lord. I pray that we would crucify this flesh daily, Lord. That we may walk in your ways. And I just give you all the praise. I give you all the glory and all the honor in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hand up your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Holy Spirit, have your way. Lead us, guide us, direct us.
clap for his work. Then we can stand and close in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Don if he would to close us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word, Lord God, and for your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, there was a day, Lord, when we came to know you, and when we received you, Father, and when we went from darkness to light. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you do in our lives, Lord, for how you help us, how you deliver us, how you heal us, how you strengthen us. I pray that you will touch this church. Thank you.